the new project is a sketchbook. The special feature of this sketchbook is that the front cover folds all the way around to the back of the book. This sketchbook is based on a design by Maureen Duke. Maureen Duke was a highly regarded English bookbinder. She was especially known for her teaching. She was the patron of the Society of Bookbinders and the Society of Bookbinders have a DVD which is an interview between her and Dominic Riley and one of the extras on the DVD has Maureen demonstrating this structure. One of the obstacles to this book is finding suitable paper. Because the book's in a landscape format, you need long thin paper that will still have the grain direction vertical. I just happen to have some nice cartridge paper, large sheets that when cut in strips of three work pretty well. Uh, but in general that is one of the obstacles to making the book is finding a suitable paper, a paper that's nice for drawing on, has a bit of a tooth and that will have the right grain direction. In the video Maureen stresses that the spine of this book has to have both great flexibility and strength. To that end she doesn't line the spine and she does a link stitch over the supporting tapes, also often known as French sewing. Also to strengthen the inner hinge and the attachment of the book to the case, and this is a cased book, she hooks a piece of cloth around the first and last sections. She doesn't demonstrate that in the video, uh, but it is fairly straightforward. I'll use one of my paste papers for the end papers, which will be the paste down and the first free end paper. And I will tip those to the first and last section and then put the reinforcing hinge on, around the outside of the outer sections. I would normally use starched calico to wrap around the first and last sections, however I found that I've completely run out, I couldn't even find any scraps. So I used the, the lightest weight book cloth that I could find uh, that was also light in colour. I'm doing four sheet sections and ten sections in total. Once I'd folded the sections and the end papers, I pressed them hard overnight. In the video, Maureen sews the text block on tapes which she frays out. The reason she frays out the tapes is because you want uh, the flexible section, the big wide joint at the front to not have any lumps in it. Now instead of fraying out tapes, I decided to use a Rami band, which is really thin and wasn't going to show through. Uh, even when it wasn't frayed out, and you could fray out the Rami bands. So I'm going to sew on two supports. It's a fairly narrow book, this one. Uh, if you, make, you could make a much larger version of this, and then you would sew on more supports. So I mark up in the usual way, and then I'll go and pre-punch the holes. I haven't had a chance to mention it, but this is a cased binding, so I'll make the text block and then the case, and then bring the two together. I'm going to do it in two videos, so the first video, this one, will cover making the text block, and then the second one will cover the case and uh, casing in. Now would be a good time to tip on the end papers to the first and last sections, and tip on the cloth and wrap it around these, so that the hole would be punched through them at this point. However, uh, I was still thinking about what uh, cloth to use because I'd run out of the calico. Uh, so I just wanted to keep moving forward with the project. So I'm going to do it slightly out of order. Um, it doesn't make a big difference, but it's probably more efficient to do the end papers at this point, uh, before punching, starting to punch the holes. 
My major deviation from Maureen's design is to line the spine. So Maureen emphasized the flexibility, so not lining uh, and strength coming from the link stitch over the tapes. However, I have always been concerned about the spine cracking and I line it with scrim. Uh, I don't think it adds, takes away from the flexibility much, but provides significant reinforcement. So now I'll do the end papers, tip the end papers on the first and last sections and wrap the cloth around them. At the very end of the second video, just before finishing the book, uh, I'll cover a really neat little feature of these end papers. So that's a, a nice little surprise at the end. So how wide to make this strip of cloth? Well. Um, it's the same length as the book, so the height of the spine. And on the uh, in between the first and la sorry the first and second sections, you really only want two three millimeters at most because you don't want the uh, cloth to be very noticeable. So now I'm doing this very thin strip of adhesive, which will go down on the. A white side of the first and last sections which will then wrap around. It probably only needs an inch to wrap around but I've made it more than two inches. Uh, I want that cloth to span that flexible wide groove at the front of the book so that's why I've gone two inches. So it'll just add a bit of strength to that to that wide joint I guess it is. So that's why I've gone two inches, but it's it's uh, not crucial. Now I've re-punched those holes, just using the original holes as a guide. This book is rounded but not backed. Now this detail wasn't clear from uh, Maureen's video. Uh, I've made this assumption in the video. It didn't look like it was backed. It didn't have shoulders, is what I mean by backed. Uh, but it did have some swell. So I'm using a fairly thick thread to make sure that there's some swell. So I'm using 18.3 linen thread to make sure that I've got some swell. And that will help with the rounding. This cloth is stronger than the calico thread, so it's being a bit difficult to sew through. I find the second and third sections the hardest to sew on. Well, particularly the third section. I think I tend to sew the second section too tight. And then it's hard to get the needle behind the sewing um, for the third section. So as you go along, you can see you just link up with the section below over the tape. It's a bit hard to explain in words, so uh, I think the video explains it better than me trying to describe it. If you do have trouble uh, with the link stitch, uh, using a second needle just to open up the gap, just use the blunt end of the needle to lift the thread away from the tape. So there's a bit of a gap that you can uh, push the needle with the thread on through. You'll see me struggle with it a little bit, so you'll get the idea of what the issue is. The easiest way to deal with it is normally to pick it up, but I'm trying to hold it in front of the camera. So at some point I eventually get frustrated with it and do pick it up. The other thing is it's really hard not to catch the support. In this case it's the Rami band. Uh, if it's cotton tape it's very easy to catch in the tape as well. With the Rami band it's very easy to pull some of the fine fibers out and then um, it's hard to push them back down again and you keep catching on them. The easiest thing to do then is just to pull through 
the Rami band, so there's a fresh piece under the uh, under the sewing. So here you can see where I was struggling to get the needle through.
Now we'll tip on the first and last sections. So just to add strength and it will hide the little strip of cloth. It will mean that those two pages won't open quite as nicely as the rest, but it's a small price for the extra strength. Now before we glue up the spine, knock it up quite vigorously. You want all the sections lined up at the spine. So be quite forceful with uh, knocking them up and then put them in the press and glue the spine. Now don't glue over the tapes because we are going to round this book and so we need the tapes to be able to slide underneath the sewing. Just push the excess little bits of thread in between uh, a couple of the sections. Put a bit of uh, glue underneath them, then push them down into the sections. And also use your fingers to force the adhesive between the sections. I mean, you don't want it going in more than a millimeter, but you do want the adhesive to go into the spine. And now, uh, before the adhesive has gone too hard, trim the fore edge. Now round the book. Now you don't want to leave the book overnight and for the adhesive to set up uh, really well before rounding. You want to do that as soon as possible after putting adhesive on the spine while the adhesive is still a bit soft. Now that the swell has been reduced in the spine by the rounding, it's uh, easier to cut the head and tail on the guillotine. And I'm really sorry for people that don't have a guillotine or a plow. Uh, I really wish I had a, a good solution for you. Uh, I think the best bet is to try and find a friend that has a guillotine. Now, I almost forgot to put end bands or headbands on this book. Uh, it probably doesn't need them. And in hindsight, I probably should have used a cloth, a very flexible cloth, not one with a cane down the core. Uh, because of the flexibility. Instead, I just used some leftover homemade end band where I've just wrapped a piece of paste paper uh, around a piece of hemp cord. Or maybe it was jute cord. I'm sure it was jute cord. Now I'm going to put the scrim on the spine. Again, how much you leave hang on either side is up to you. More than an inch is probably overkill. Um, I did want enough to bridge that flexible, wide flexible joint at the front. So uh, I would say two inches at the front, an inch at least at the back. It, you probably want to be symmetric, so two inches front and back. You do want this really well attached. You want the adhesive forced through the scrim. So use a piece of baking paper to really bone that down well. To make casing in a lot easier at the end of the project, it's a good idea to uh, paste or glue down the cloth reinforcing, the scrim and the tapes. Now there are some disadvantages to this. Uh, Johnson talks about how you can cause wrinkles in the end paper doing this. Um, there are pros and cons. I, I think there's a small risk of getting wrinkles in the end papers, uh, but it's greatly outweighed by the advantage of making it easier to case in. So trim, uh, trim everything up and then glue it down. If you use straight PVA, so you're minimizing the moisture that you're introducing, that minimizes the chances of getting wrinkles. I should mention, leave one side dry before doing the other so it doesn't stick to the bench when you turn it over. So here's a sneak peek of the finished product. Uh, we'll get this done next week. I'm sure I've glossed over lots of details. Please put your questions in the comments and I can answer them in the video next week. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the big thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified of my future videos, like the finish of this sketchbook, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, cheerio.